I would like to introduce Deacon Garrett Carlucci, and I hope his stay here at St. Rita will be beneficial for him first, and also for all of us. On behalf of all of you, I welcome I fooled you. you think that I am going to miss the sermon? He was going to preach to you? You are fooled. Next week, I think Kaluchi will speak, will say the sermon at St. Francis. The words of Jesus today are very, very serious. Many of you, after the master of the house, close the door, will come and knock. Open for us. And he will say from inside, I don't know you. I don't know you, where you come from. And you say, we ate with you. We drank with you. You speak in our streets. And he will say to you, away from me, you evil doers. That's very serious. That really brings to us some thinking. In the first reading today, we heard the prophet Isaiah speaking to the people who are in exile in Babylon. People who have enough, they don't want to do nothing, they don't want to hear about God, they want to do what they want and tell the prophet, leave us alone. God said to the prophet, I know their thoughts. I know who they are. I know they are rebellion people. But I am sending to you to them to remind them that I will bring out of them what we call it the remnant. Because not all of them are going to return to Jerusalem. And the remnant will build the temple again. They did work well in the city. And they will see my glory. And they will be the one who will enter the kingdom. Because many of the Jewish people will not. And you will be surprised to see the north and the south. The east and the west. Entering and you will return. And that prophecy was fulfilled today in the Gospel we just read. A question was asked to Jesus, are many going to be saved? Jesus never gave an answer. In fact, he said, the way that leads to God is very narrow. And many will not have the strength to travel and then he said that not because we heard his mass, not because we celebrate the sacraments, not because we go to church, not because we are Catholic, not because we are somebody who knows the scripture, not because some, we know the doctrine of the church. If we don't put it into practice, we are called evil doers. And he will say to us that he will open the house for all nations and people from the east and the west, from the north and the south will enter and you will reject it. In the second reading, we find a very strong but very actual lesson. Many of you have children. Many of you are teachers. Many of you are in a position that you see something that is not going according to your principles or according to your faith and you say to your son, enough, come here boy, I need to talk. And you reveal to that boy or to that girl things that they are doing that you are not pleased with. At that moment, they will not really hold you in great honor. They think that you are the most mean person in town. 
Why I cannot stay with my friends overnight? Why I cannot come after 11 o'clock? Why I have to do this? And why I have to go to college? And why I have to go to the school? And why this and why that? And you as a parent, because you have a good judgment, say, because this is for the best for you. Because I love you. Because I want you to have a future. Because this company of friends are no good. And you be no good like them. Because I heard that when you were at that party, you have alcohol there. And they're not going to happen with that. And many times, they really become very angry at you. But when they grow up, the picture changed. And what you have given them in your guidance, they are using it as a measure by which they guide their own children. Because we cannot give what we have, we only give what we have. But then when they grow up, and God forbid you are gone, you say, how stupid I was. But always, we are all lawyers and, and attorneys after the thing is done. But I did not listen to my mother. I'm going to close my eyes because people think I'm pointing my, my, my face to you. Many of you today in the view say, I know he's saying the right thing. Because my mother told me not to bury this bomb and I buried it. Dear people, discipline is not very pleasant. But discipline has to be. One of the highest resources that they found today, that although our children does not like to be disciplined, they look forward to that discipline. Do you know that? No. They want to know if this is right or wrong. And they look up to you to tell them the truth. But you cannot leave years to go without correcting and all of a sudden you become the, you know, the most holy of holy. It's like I have a tree. And in a few months I'm going to put it to the ground because they uh, to put the, the put whatever you plant in the fall. And that tree is nice when they gave it to me, but I never put a stick there. So I go in the summer or I go in the spring and I found it like this. Oh, I have to make a stick now, it's too late. My dear parents, we as priests have failed you as leaders. You parents have failed us too. Because we have watered down our faith. We find all kinds of excuses to get away from things. Because I think and I know that God is love and He will never permit us to go to hell. You got the gospel today? Why did Jesus speak about grinding of teeth and this and that? Why? Why did Jesus speak of that language if there is no such hell? Because there is hell. And hell is for those who do not know God. Go, to, go this afternoon, visit some homes for those young men who have been at 3 o'clock in the bar and they are still hangover in bed. And they'll see how happy they are without God. They claim they are happy, but there is no happiness. And you can see there are no happiness because the more they want, the more they play, the more they party, the more they want and want and want. And you know why? Because there is no God. Where there is God, there is no God, there is no happiness. They can claim that they are happy, but they are not. Because God created us for His own. And we are like a pie. A piece of a pie. And unless that pie becomes part of the lot of the whole pie, we are not happy. Oh God, you create me for yourself, St. Augustine said. And my heart will never rest before it rests in me. That is why today's gospel is so urgent. 
Because Jesus is saying to us, it's not how much you know of me, it's not how much you know the gospel, it's not how much you claim you are Catholic. Many of us Catholic, you know, we think that we are better off than other faiths. Oh, we are all going to have it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's what they say. The only thing you need to do is to die. In fact, if after somebody who is away from the church and die, when we go to the view, we go, he is with Jesus. He is with Jesus, all right. They come out of here before the roof collapse. My dear people, we cannot be, we cannot be naive about this. Jesus is saying to us, to know my truth is to live my truth. My faith is a lifestyle. That's why he said at the kingdom I will ask you. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was ill, I was in prison. What did you do for me? Don't tell him I was busy building the, the, the casinos. Because there are people in your own family who are hungry for a word of encouragement. There are people in your own town who need to be reached out to. There are people in your own area and circle of friends who are reaching out to you in their silence. And you remain so stungy because you are busy. When you are born, your mother did not say, I am busy, but she took the full responsibility to raise you. Now that she is elderly, she's not asked to do the same, but at least to be there for her. How can we claim that we have done such good job? When you, when you look around us, we don't see the young people. We have failed them. We as priests have failed them and scandalized them. We have to be ashamed of ourselves. But you parents equal with us in the responsibility. Oh, God knows and God forgives and God loves. All right, if you don't go to Mass, it's like that boy. I said, Gregory, what have you been all summer? I didn't see you in church. Father, my mother told me that God is on vacation in summer. Oh, I said, where did he go to Ocean City? He never invited me to his house. <laughs> Dear people, this is what we project to our young people. They saw you doing and they hear you talk about your sister-in-law, about your father-in-law, about members of your family. You this very much so, you must really water down what you say in the pew. If we celebrate love here, which we are celebrating love, when God loved us so much that he gave us his only son, and we who heard the message as the, as the Holy Spirit said about Jesus, this is my beloved son, hear him. And we come to celebrate the union with Jesus, who is the center of our union with Him. And now we go out, and our dinner tables on the couches and our home talk about people and bring people down. That's love. That's unity. That example. You wonder why our people say, I don't believe in you. You bunch of hypocrites. You bunch of evildoers, Jesus calls us. Because we do not put into practice what we really preach. I'm not speaking just for you. I begin the first one to admit it.